keynote speaker is Dr. Jackie Chong. Dr. Chong is currently a senior research fellow in the School of Design and Environment at NUS. Dr. Chong formed a cross-faculty construction 3D printing research unit at the Department of Building, aiming at promoting construction 3D printing development in 2016. And this research unit has converted into a construction 3D printing program on the NUS Center for Additive Manufacturing. In collaboration with the Singapore National Additive Manufacturing Innovation Cluster, this program has organized a series of international programs uh, on construction 3D printing, which are all well received by the professionals and experts in this field. In recognition of his contribution and expertise in 3D printing, Dr. Chong has been appointed as a member of Technical Committee of the China National Innovation Institute of Additive Manufacturing. And up to 2018, he has been presented 10 research and teaching awards and has produced more than 82 research publications in leading academic journals and international conferences. He has been appointed as an associate editor of Build Environment Project and Assess Management, the associate editor of Frontiers in Build Environment Construction Management, and the editorial board member of International Journal of Sustainable Real Estate and Construction Economics. Let's welcome Dr. Chong. Uh, okay, thank you. At the back, can you hear my voice? Okay, thank you. So, uh, I would like to make an announcement. I'll lunch at 12.40, so I'll keep my presentation fast. So that's why you can enjoy your meal. So today is a very important day to me. I'm so nervous. Do you know why? Because today we have so many 3D print experts, like Prof Fu and Prof Yan. Uh, they're the real 3D printing experts. And also we have Professor Brock. So I mean today is just like my examination. I'm also so happy for my former teacher, is Mr. Kong. He taught me 20 years ago in Hong Kong. And also he joined me. So, I mean, thank you for everyone. Because I say it's without Professor Pudok. No construction 3D printing. No our conference today. So that's why I would like to give a special thanks to Professor Pudok. So, for my presentation title, one word, Genesis. Because I think is 3D printing is not new. Construction 3D printing is also not new. We have more than 20 years. But what happened in the last 20 years, what we have done only for demonstration, laboratory tests. But why I choose this term? Because I believe starting from this year, we are going to have the real projects. For example, last month in Neftanen, they have already mentioned, announced a contractor going to print the 3D printing house for sale. Okay, for our team, we end of this year, we are also going to use 3D printing to produce the toilet, talk about mass production. So I mean, this year is very meaningful because 3D printing is just not keep empty talk saying no. We are going to have something real in the industry. So for today, I think is I talk is, I will use another angle because it's, I'm not engineer. My background is I'm quantity surveyor. What I did before is project management. So until three years ago, I learned this because after we set a factory in China, prefabrication factory, before going there, I think is wow, prefabrication, very advanced, very high, high, high level. But I go there is we only have empty factory, nothing else. So that's why I'm thinking is, is it we should do something? So that's why I start to study 3D printing. So for today the talk, I say is I just share my dream, our dream about 3D printing and construction. So I go through quickly go through four topics. The first one is what well, the problem nature of free, uh, construction and also with 3D printing and also explain why 3D printing it perfectly fit construction. And the last one is talk about the benefit. So how many of you working as contractor? Please raise your hand. Yes. So have you think about what happened today after tomorrow? What does it mean? Because I say is construction in the past over 100 years, we are very comfortable with our work because we have free treasure. What are they? Concrete, steel, and timber. And all construction companies are also happy with their work and profit. But 
Have you think about the problem is we have a lot of fundamental problem in construction. First of all, low productivity, I think it's well known. So you see, the red line is manufacturing. Construction, we are here. Our productivity is very low. You see, why we need so many workers? Next one is labor intensive. Okay, so we have different kind of labor, steel bender, pumper. The problem is, you see, the salary is going up. I mean, in Hong Kong, now, construction worker, it gets salary, it's higher than mine. It's 300 US dollar per day, per day, for construction worker in Hong Kong. Because unlike Singapore, we can have foreign worker. In Hong Kong, there's no. Many of them, they are almost 60. But the problem is, you pay 300 US dollar per day, you still cannot get the new blood. And in Singapore, I read this one is also crazy. Because for our graduate, I'm sorry this is in Chinese, for our university graduate, in Singapore we can get only 3,000 Sing dollars. But for this restaurant, for someone do the wall cleaning, the dish cleaning, it get 4,005 plus accommodation, plus meal, plus ticket. What does it mean? Our little courses keep going up. So, and then the next problem is lack of design flexibility. So most of our building, I talked to my architect friend, the only conclusion, actually, always is the box shape because of safe codes. Of course, we have very nice one, unless you're Sahadi or the big architect, you're capable to do this. And the next one, construction industrialization. We have four stage. The first one is we have mechanization, production line, automation, and cyber space. We have 1.4.0. So I have a strong debate with my colleagues. Where are we now? My colleagues, they say is, oh, we have two to three between mechanization and automation. But I show you this photo. This photo was taken in 215. Okay, don't read the script. Do you know what's the time of this photo? Yes, 1912. You see, 1912 and 215. Can you see any difference? No. So, for example, in Singapore, we are very happy with prefabrication and PPVC volumetric. But indeed, prefabrication is not new. We have more than 100 years. Okay, long time ago, UK, they shipped their building from UK to Cape Town. So even for volumetric PPVC, we are going to use it in Singapore. But it did, in US, more than 50 years. This one and the second one is Orlando. So what I want to bring out the problem is, in the last 100 years, we don't have any great improvement in construction. So what you see, the building price index is going up, the product, the tenant price remains the same. Only one consequence, like that. Diminution return is death. I mean, they are very good company before, but because they cannot catch the fashion, they cannot catch the technology. So that's why at the end, you say, thank you, bye-bye. So, are we moving forward? I've already explained. Uh, no, we, because if you ask me, I'll describe we are only 0 0.5. Because in construction site, we have a thousand worker. Do we have a thousand too? No, maybe 900 worker. They're still using their hand. So yeah, I take the average. For construction, we are only zero point something. So in construction, we also have new term is digital construction, digital design, and digital fabrication. So digital design in Singapore, we're doing very well. But no matter how good of your design, if you go to the construction, what happened? It still use worker. Okay, and then now, when we talk about construction industrialization, we use the process approach, it's process automation. It's just like this one, the manufacturing. They use it for a long time. So in construction, maybe we have these automatic screening machines, wall building machines, rebar building machines. Yes. And also 20 or 30 years ago in Japan, they have already got this canopy factory. And also, we also have automated prefabrication factory. So, but what I say is, we have digital design, no matter how good, when you go to the industry, the factory, I mean the site, most of the case, most of the case, we're still using what? Worker and labor. Yes, we have some machines, but the problem is that it's like this one. 
This is the factory. You see, inside, we, we only see 90% of people. But in this kind of factory, my friend, make a joke, it's a ghost factory. Because you only see the machine moving, no worker. And also, this map, I get it from Autodesk. Talk about the future construction. You see what talk about future construction? Indeed, there's no major breakthrough. So, I mean what I say in the last 20 or 30 years, we talk about construction industrialization, we get movement, but slowly. So, what I say is, up to today, we are not talking about, should not only focus on innovation. We should think about what solution is the way to change our practice in construction. So, what I say is, like making coffee, if we use a manual way to do it, and using coffee machines, you see, coffee machine is very advanced, just press a button. But indeed, you think deeply, there's no change in the production process. For example, making coffee, we have 10 steps. You use coffee machines, it's still 10 steps. But okay, I used to grind the bean, they use the branding machines, and also integrate them together. So, what I say is, for mechanization and automation, it's not enough. So I propose we should do process simplification and integration. What does it mean by simplification? That means now we have 10 steps. We hope to take out what? Two steps. And 10 to 28, 8 to 6. For example, for construction, well, for concrete printing, without this, we need formwork. But we using this technique, at least we can take out what? The formwork. We take out some step. And also I remember the case from Prof. Richard. For example, when the slab, we have the rebar. But if we can use the house, ultra high strength concrete to make it strong, indeed, no need for rebar anymore. We can, I would say is less is more. Simple is always the best. So that's why we should think about how can we simplify the construction process. So where's 3D printing? So you need so many terms. We are big data and AI, but only 3D printing can do production. I mean, AI, they can help you to make decisions, but cannot make product. So uh, I think it's free printing is uh, just briefly, quickly, because for free printing, we target, want to control the position of materials. So we have a droplet. So we can, one drop, if you have many drops, we form a line, many lines, we form a plane, many planes stack together, we have the 3D object. So theoretically, using free printing, we can create all kinds of shape. You can draw, we can produce. I also want to, many people mix up robotic and free printing. Robotic, just replace the manual work. We won't change the process. But for free printing, we adopt a new approach to make the production. And then my next question is, why? Jackie, why 3D printing we should use in construction? First of all, in construction, our production, we don't have any chemical reaction, no. First of all, what's the building? The building, we have the building envelope. We provide indoor and outdoor environment. So how can we construct a building? We put different building components, wall, slab, column, beam, just let it go. Just put them together. And then how we can make column beam? It's very simple, just like making a jelly. We have a mold, we add concrete. So I mean, do you think it's the whole construction process? What we are doing, we only create shape. Put the materials, create in different shape component. So that's perfectly fit the purpose of 3D printing. 3D printing cannot produce new materials, no. It can do is create shape. In 3D printing world, complexity is free. So that means like construction of formwork, the plain formwork is cheap, the curved one is expensive. But using 3D printing, plain or curved, same or similar, very similar. So that means we can provide lots of possibility. So the second is for 3D printing, it's good because it's okay. In Singapore, we have a lot of HDB flat. They look the same. But indeed, when I talk to engineers, they say no. For all bathroom unit or it's different size, they are slightly different. So that's why all the building is one off. So we claim is for construction, it is one off product. So it's difficult to use for mass production under prefabrication environment. So for free printing, it's good thing is flat production rate. That means you produce one piece and you produce a thousand pieces. It's similar. But of course, the volume is small. 
is free printing is better. But talking about very high volume, is maybe the mass production is better. And also here, this one, one printer is one production line. You see here we have nine printer. It's nine production line. The robot arm will pick out the product and put on this belt. So I mean by doing this, we can solve our construction problem. We can use free printing to produce different org shape or org size of building component. And also the next one is mass customization. Because 3D printing, good thing is because now we go to buy flat, we only can choose type A or type B. Can I have this one smaller curve? No. But for free printing, because of the standard rate flat way of production, it allows mass customization. So maybe in the future, we can have personalized building. It's like this one. They're from China. I mean, can we do this right now? Yes, but higher cost. Using 3D printing, you can make your own one. So, I talk about 3D printing and move on to talk about construction one. So, as mentioned by Prof. Bodok, so concrete crafting is coming from the NASA project. So now, nowadays, we usually for concrete printing, because I say it's for construction 3D printing, it's not limited concrete. We can print timber, polymer, graphene, uh, graphite, and also steel, metal. I mean, but most of the case at this stage, we do concrete. So for concrete, uh, uh, concrete crafting and this concrete printing are similar. I mean, we call positive printing. The materials is coming out from the nozzle to create the product. For the D-shape, the idea is we have a box of powder or sand. The binding agent is coming out from the nozzle and stick all this fine powder together. So there are two types. So for extrusion, I mean, 3D printing can be very complicated, but simple way is also very simple. It's like concrete printer. Coming out is cream, but not concrete. And also for this, we also do this every day. So for free printing, get some idea, we'll talk about the product. For, we can produce something small, we can also produce something big. For example, for this one, if I'm correct, it should be MIT, they produce the building bite by polymer, okay? One piece and then step it together. We can also produce precast component. And also we can produce volumetric unit or complete unit. Here, you see some of the example produced by our research partner. Uh, they can also produce, this one should be foundation, um, the, the fencing. So, and the next, we produce, we can also produce what? On-site and off-site. On-site means very simple. We bring the machines there, like the chef coming to your home to cook it, okay? Of course, usually we have a much giant machine. And also, uh, this one is gantry type. The middle one I classify is maybe robotic, and right-hand side we call delta type, yeah. So, we can also do off-site production. That means made in factory, just like what we're doing in Singapore. So we can shift the component to the site to do the installation. So far, in the last, I mean, 10 years, so globally, if I'm correct, we have around 30 completed 3D printer structure or buildings. Uh, left hand side, the first one, uh, the print houses in 24 hours. And then the middle one in Dubai. And right hand side, so far is still the tallest one, it's five story. All of them, is, they are done by the same contractor from China. And in Europe, we can print, okay, we can print house. We can also print civil, uh, I mean, civil engineering projects. We print the bridge, this one, and this one is pre-stress. Okay, here two sides pre-stress. And also our team, you also like to do more underground, underground facilities. So, I mean, free printing is not only for building, also with civil, uh, civil engineering. So, we talk about concrete, and here, this one is by Shanghai Tongji University. They use polymer to print this bridge. And also in Europe, Max 3D, they use, uh, it's already complete, it's used metal. So, okay, so you get some about idea about free printing, well, the products. And also I talk about the global development. So this is European Commission. It proposed 
we should do it for affordable housing because the production cost is low and also for emergency housing because we also come up with idea so in case of earthquake the road they block we can use helicopter to send two machines the first one is material cracking machines because we can make use of the collapsed building to collect the brick or concrete to make it in fine aggregate and then the second machine is what 3d printing machines and we make with soil and also the additive so we use local materials to print the temporary shelter the small house we can be capable to print maybe 24 hours to finish one so it's good for what disasters resilience so the next one is architectural feasibility i'll also explain this the last one this is my own point i'll say we should create value added features i'll also explain this later so globally the most fast growing market is in dubai because dubai they already adopt construction 3d printing as their national strategy for example their point out is by 2030 25 percent of the dubai buildings by print printing in the five years they build 1.5 million houses so they have already signed the mou the contract is even correct is 1 billion us dollars in singapore um this report was launched around two years ago they position 3d printing construction 3d printing in tier 2 because the reason is in singapore we have high-rise building it's not ready yet the good news is that is last a few weeks ago bca they have already launched a new research grant with focus on construction uh, concrete printing with reinforcement so my next part is about the potential benefits so potential benefit we have time cost quality okay so the first one i like is two free fabrication okay in construction we have a lot of process because 3d printing we can simplify so we take out a lot of unnecessary work so for example for 3d printing what we need we only need one what printer but in real construction we need crane we need bulldozer so many machines but here we use one only so at least as i mentioned before by using concrete printing we if we can take out the formwork and the carpenter we can already save 20 percent of time and cost because uh we have already done a mini study to compare conventional construction prefabrication and 3d printing we found using 3d printing we can significantly reduce the unskillful labor by 90 percent but at the same time we need technician and we need manager so, so you mean uh, you avoid the chamber correct uh, about the, um, <coughs> how about the beams beams itself you mean it's work and on site or it's external work okay as, as, as a beam that's what i'm thinking about okay because now for concrete printing usually we do wall but for cantilever structure if precast beam and column we can do it but we talk about is the hanging one cannot yeah so the next one is the process automation this is i like it the most because it's just like you order the dell computer online what do you need to do choose your model choose your hard disk and then add send your bill and then they'll build it and say to you because here we have digital construction we have the beam model if we can we're going to because we have been center in uh, our school we would like to develop the platform to link up with beam system and free printing system so that's why when you press the button the machines on site can do automatically so that means it's also allow you to remote control your work maybe somewhere outside singapore ah the next one single piece of fabrication this is a very important point because like making the sports shoes conventional construction we have what different production line make the first part upper part lower part and then the last we do what assembly in construction we're doing the same thing but for but in for free printing we have the hybrid printer that means one printer can print multiple materials for example this one can print 10 materials but unfortunately in construction there's no hybrid concrete printer yet so that means we print concrete can only print concrete i hope 
before I die, maybe 20 years later. We can have a super construction 3D printer, can print concrete, polymer, timber, glass, steel. Because now we can print it individually, but it takes time for us to combine them together. So this is one example, 3D printer to make the spot shoes at one go. The next one, this is LED light, the torch. With different layer, the, the 3D printing can also make the component at one time. So, and then talk about the benefit. Most of the case, people will say is improve the production efficiency. That means time cost quality. So can save, save labor. For example, for this one, I get this information from internet, okay? But so far, globally, we haven't done any real comparative study to compare conventional method and 3D printing method. What we have done, we just use a component as a pilot study. So this one, it claimed conventional way, 30 people in three months. Now they use eight people in one month. Uh, the other one is from Russia. So uh, now they become a US company right now. So they can use only 24 hours. But I checked with 24 hours. I talked to my friends, they say is 24 hours cannot. Because when we do the printing, our technology still needs some time for the concrete to set up. So that means 24 hours means printing our 24 hours, may not be the whole process 24 hours. So improve the product quality, I think is uh, one of the person asked question. I see it's amazing. Because for free printing, is last, uh, okay, some time ago I visited my friends in Hong Kong. They run the free printing center. They asked me, is construction, what is our best solution? I mean, the precision. I say maybe 5 mm or 3 to 8. They say from the world, talk about 10 micron. That means we talk about they produce a ball, we produce a moon. So I mean, for free printing, we have very, very high precisions. You see, this is the match. We can produce something smaller than this. I'm saying, say, all this can use in construction, but at least the technique, it is capable for very high resolution. So you see, the quality is very, very good. So for example, this one, they build the bridge because they use free printing to build the metal bridge by doing this, the bridge itself, the curve, everything is perfect because with very, very high precisions. And also in our department, we also have done some work because this is heritage building maintenance, okay? The problem is the same. We can't find the craftsmen, good craftsmen to do all this because they're passing away. So what we have done, this is the real stuff, is the size is like this uh, with Prof Yen. He helped to produce this, it's a very nice piece of work. So he scanned it and used our nylon printer to produce. So even we can, this one is wooden, even the crack, we can use the scanner to capture and reproduce it. And also for free printing is free form fabrication. As mentioned is complexity is free. So this one is done by Arab in Europe. They use metal printer to do this. You see, it was the, because maybe in our uh, metal structure, okay, we need a very precise angle. So 3D printer, it can help a lot. So on right hand side, this is by, should be by um, D shape, this one if I'm correct. You see the shape is very nice. So this one is by Professor Yuan Feng in Shanghai, is by Polymer. So, I mean, I want to show all this example. Now, can we do this? Yes. For example, in Singapore, Vivo City, we have this. In Crown Hotel, this. And also, for example, for this one, is local London Aquatic Center. We make it. How we make it? I learned they use one-off formwork. And then they tell me, and then they dispose. I mean, we can make all this very nicely shaped right now, but the problem is time and money and cost. So by free printing, we can make it very simple and at a very reasonable cost. 
So the next one is computer control manufacturing. So because it's like your fridge or your printer, what you need, you just press the button because the machine itself would modify the environment. Just like concrete is saying, we can control the temperature. So everything is computer. Because this one, the example, you can get from YouTube. They make the production is under minus around 30 degrees. So I mean, because in Middle East, daytime they cannot work. In Tibet or Lofton Europe, winter, they cannot also work. But if we have this 3D printing, we just let the machines to run throughout all these kind of extreme conditions. So, and also my last part is promote design function innovation. Because most of the case, we ask people what's free printing. They only think about you use it, new technique to produce the existing product. Just like I give you a Corolla, you use it for Uber. But I give you a Ferrari, you use it for Uber. So that means we should use it to do something we cannot achieve in the past. So here are some example. So first of all, I would like to produce, introduce the concept called construction plus. Okay, before this, we have digital construction. Digital construction means I use conventional aid to produce something, and then I use digital way to produce something. But the end product would be what? The same. But here, construction plus means additional. That means wall is no longer only a wall, can have cooling function. Maybe the column is also with additional function because it's now we can use free printing, we have this hybrid solution. So that's why we can create or add many new features to the existing component. Here are some examples. Maybe the first one. In Singapore, to save energy, we use electric ventilation. Okay, we can have the, this ventilation block. But the problem is we have noise or sunlight. But by using properly, what they have done, they use free printing to produce this ceramic block. And then they add a tube on it to soak the water. So that's why I allow the incoming air to cool down from 42 degrees to 26 degrees. Can also increase the humidity. For this one, in Singapore, not applicable because it's, our humidity is very high. But for Middle East, it's very, very useful. What we're doing is we like to work top on it, not only cooling and also air purification, like if we have air pollution. So we work with our colleagues from chemistry. We have the coating. So that's why wall, no longer wall, is provide natural ventilation and provide cooling and also provide air purification. This is I call is multi-function component. Without 3D printing, can we do that? Manually, yes. But it's also very, very expensive. And also the other one is because in Middle East there I learned that is ah. Oh, at night, we are cold. Can we make it control the air movement? Yes, we can build the valve. That means at night, under certain temperature, it will close. And then the next one, because you learn about 3D printing, our team were working very hard to develop construction 4D printing. 4D printing is not new, because like our friends is SUTD or MIT, they have already done it. But we would like to adopt this technology for construction use. For example, for this facade is kinetic facade. Because 4D printing, it says, why do we do use for 3D printing for this? 4D printing? Because we can use 3D printing to produce a very precision control of the mechanism. So that's why we call programmable action. So that's why by doing this, we can control the movement of the materials. So that's why you like you can go to YouTube, you see there's a box. Put in the hot water, you open and close automatically. So the other one is just like we have this uh, sun shield, okay? We we'll follow the sun, create the shadow. By using the photo printing techniques with Orkami, we can also do the same thing. So I think it's um, for today, I say is I hope after our conference, it will be a start for you because I hope we can give you some idea We've talked about construction industrialization, not only <coughs> mechanization or automation, and also with 3D printing. And also one more point.
for 3D printing, I say is crazy. I use the term is crazy. Because why? I share my personal example to you. My first time to learn about internet is in 1995. So at that time, is internet means only email or a very limited browser. So I remember if I need to get, in, get online, I need to walk. Use modem, connect the phone line, and beep, 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 and then switch on the program called Edora to check email. And then my friend asked, hey, Jackie, why you make so complicated? We have fax machines. Why don't you use fax machine? Because at that time, it's just only beginning of internet. Now, you know, internet is very useful. We have share bike. If you go to a restaurant, you can do the order. So to me, what we learn about construction 3D printing, maybe only 0.1% of the full potential of 3D printing. Because let's say what I say so is, we have the printer. Whatever you can put in the printer, we can print. So that means we can make use of many materials that are not commonly used in construction. And also we can provide many, I mean, it's hybrid materials. So create the many new features. And also the impact would be very, very significant. Just like autopilot car. Now, we, I mean, in Singapore, I learned that is Grab also have one is running. So can you see, if this technology may be five years later, we may not need taxi driver anymore. And then we may not need bus driver. So it changed everything. For three minutes, the same would create a very strong impact on construction, in particular for the labor demand. And also for the auto park car, it's also changed our living style because it's now if we want to go buy something, we go to 7 Eleven convenience store. Maybe in the future, you press something, there's a moving box, it's the shop we come to your place, you can do the shopping there. And also, I mean, what I say is, all this technology, they are going very, very fast, it's exponential. So that's why, I, at the beginning, I mentioned about its genesis, because now it's only just a beginning. So I say it's because what I mentioned, the change at the beginning, the trend is going on. No matter you want to get or not, get on or not, it's going. So I hope to take this opportunity to share not only the barriers. What I see not barrier, I see is business opportunity. We can do things cheaper and better. So this is my last slide. Because I, we are maintaining, I'm running a website on Facebook. It's called Construction 3D Printing Research Network. So because I'm still learning, I'm still learning from manufacturing and also I'm learning from my colleagues and friends. So I will keep on sharing all information about construction fee deepening there. So that's all from that. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chong. May I invite Professor Liu for chair the Q&A session? <laughs> Yeah, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, so far, okay, there's no any research study, comprehensive one, has done so far. But now we are, t we are, we are, we are our team. We are working with the civil Prof. Richard. So we are going to submit a proposal to do this for a particular Singapore situation. Yes. 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 So what we want to put, uh, study, we will take PVVC as our example. We try to see how 3D printing can use to produce PVVC, and also, for example, beam column or something like that. And and we take the component to do the testing, so as to provide this information for designer. So maybe Paul Richard, can you say something? 
the, the structural analysis for 3D printing materials. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, what we are trying to do is that they do the printing, we do the structural testing. That means certifications uh, is uh, one of the process. Yes. Mm. Uh, analysis to us is very easy. Okay, <laughs> analyzing 3D shapes, all these things. Uh. Now we have all the finite element programs, now we can do that analysis. Not a problem. Yes, any other questions? Yes. Yes. Kim Chun. Yes. Okay. Uh, maybe because outside we have a booth, okay? To be honest, for 3D printing right now, it's not 100% by 3D printing, only part of it, just like the swatch, okay? Maybe the mirror, I mean, uh, I mean the glass is made in Switzerland. I claim this is Swiss made. Because now in practice is what they do, they only use 3D concrete printer to print the concrete mold and then manually add the rebar and pour the concrete. Yes. You see, Trump Richard actually come up with a type of concrete is more than true. It's uh, half true. <laughs> half true. You still need uh, reinforcement. Either traditional reinforcement or fiber reinforcement. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? If not, why don't you go for lunch and we will come back for the other sessions okay thank you very much <laughs>